Los Altos. Uh, thanks very much for making the time today. Appreciate that. And uh, hopefully your time will be well spent. Before we dive into the details of the presentation, um, I want to confirm that everyone uh, can hear us well. If you don't, there is a chat box or you can actually uh, jump into the conversation as well if uh, you need to do so. So um, uh, please uh, feel free to ask questions uh, anytime. Uh, we're going to actually discuss the, the schedule very shortly so you can basically um, aware when we will be asking questions. So before we dive into the presentation itself, uh, I want to uh, share with you uh, uh, one of the places that really makes me happy here in Silicon Valley. Uh, this is a picture that was taken from Rancho San Antonio. And um, this is one of my uh, favorite areas locally where myself, my wife and my uh, children sometimes and friends as well. We uh, like hiking in this area. It's a place which is very close to where we live. It's a beautiful place and it just kind of every time I go there reinforces uh, how lucky we are to live in this beautiful area with uh, beautiful uh, nature so close to home and then um, an industry which is so dominant and prevalent in, across the world and particularly these days. So without further ado, uh, let's go into the presentation itself and then um, we'll talk, this is our agenda for today. We will take a few minutes to general introduction. I'm gonna talk about uh, making the case for real estate investing. Uh, why should everyone be uh, considering that? We'll talk about um, real estate as an asset class. Uh, we'll talk uh, what are the um, reasons um, to consider before you're buying a house. We'll make the case for uh, con uh, considering buying an investment property in Silicon Valley. We'll talk about um, the, another critical element of your success in, in when you dive into real estate, and that is the team that you're going to be working with. And um, eventually, uh, with all those uh, almost one and a half to two hours of presentation, depends on uh, how fast you're going to go and questions and so on. We will well, basically will depart with my recommendation. And as far as the structure for Q and A. As I mentioned, you can always uh, type your questions in the chat box and uh, we will have basically after each segment, we're going to open up for about five minutes, up to five minutes of Q&A. And you can basically uh, write your question, as I mentioned, or you can uh, jump in with your microphone and ask them. Uh, at the end also, uh, at the very end, we're also going to have a five to 15 minutes of Q&A, anyone who wants to stay around, stick around and ask those questions, it's very welcome to do so. Uh, other than that, um, anyone who is interested in getting a link to the recording of that presentation, uh, you are, please please ask, uh, send us a private message in the chat box with your email address and name so we can add you to the people who receive this uh, uh, webinar. Okay, so let's get started. So, uh, let's talk about our team first. So, uh, our team is made of uh, myself and four other individuals. Uh, Asaf, who is, is my son, who works uh, on the residential side of our real estate. Ella also is doing the Silicon Valley residential with Nati who does specializes in real estate investment and particularly outside of Silicon Valley. And we have Amit Urban, who is my older son, who specializes in commercial real estate investment. And he's advisor to our group as well as to our client. Um, we, myself, uh, we, my wife and I arrived to Silicon Valley back in 1985. And since our arrival, we have been doing a lot of investments, both locally and across the country. Currently, the areas that we are investing in, as you can see, Silicon Valley, Sacramento, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Nashville, Albuquerque, Atlanta, and Knoxville, North Dallas, and Portland. 
Portland is actually a new uh, type of investment for us where we actually invested uh, close to $2 million in a, a development of a commercial real estate, and in particular a case, it was a higher hotel in Portland. And the matter of the, just so the, the truth is that the project has um, developed, moved incredibly well until COVID-19, and it was completed at an amazing pace and within budget uh, until, and it actually officially opened in January of, uh, or February of this year, and just to be uh, stricken by the COVID-19, and obviously everyone is aware of what's happening with the coronavirus impact on the economy, and hospitality, hotels, flying, and so on. But nevertheless, we are still very hopeful that that project is going to yield a, a nice return for every one of our investors. Um, one of the other things that we're very proud of is the fact that uh, we have our clients really uh, consider our services and basically are happy to share their feedback on LinkedIn, Yelp, and Zillow. 100% of our reviews are genuine. We do not play games with that. And I would encourage anyone who has not worked with us in the past to take a look. And obviously, if you are interested, we'll be happy to be, provide you direct uh, uh, contact information for uh, to get your uh, reference about our services and so on. And, and that we're calling ourselves holistic realtors. And when we may, when we talk about holistic realtors, what do we really mean about it? What we mean is that most of the age and the realtor that you will um, uh, encounter during your uh, real estate endeavors are typically very much transaction oriented. They will either help you buy or help you sell. Very few, if any, that you might be working right now are also talking about investing in real estate as, as, as much as we do. And what we mean by holistic is that we, first of all, want to be um, your partner when you are considering buying or selling a Silicon Valley home. We do want to be your partners when you are thinking about uh, in developing your nationwide residential investment portfolio. And obviously, the, uh, the holistic meaning that we put behind the, these words are that any times that you are uh, curious about real estate, you have any question about real estate, whether it's refinancing, remodeling, um, uh, uh, moving from one place to the other, and so on, we would like the people who you will be calling first for advice. That is our intention. So, uh, going back for a second here. So, anytime you see something that uh, that you have any question about real estate, we would like you to first think about ourselves and making sure that uh, your and we will do every effort to make sure to answer your questions. So. Uh, also, we have a uh, want to make sure that you are aware that uh, we have a. Uh, the ongoing market updates. Uh, we have the Silicon Valley market, uh, Silicon Valley market trend report, which is a monthly publication. Typically, uh, it's published on the tenth of the month, and that reviews uh, the market um, development in Santa Clara County and San Mateo County. These are the primary two counties that we cover. Uh, we have the introduction to real estate investment, which we obviously uh, are currently uh, listening to or participating in. And our next one is on uh, Sunday, August 16. Uh, additionally, we have um, on a monthly basis uh, uh, real time uh, ask me any and ask me anything real related to real estate, which is uh, July, on July 16. And you're welcome to call and uh, relay any question you may have. If you have some question that needs some research, please send us an email so we can uh, relate to that and find the answers to that prior to the uh, real uh, streaming uh, event. Additionally, we have uh, on July 26, uh, the Silicon Valley Home Buyers webinar, where we cover the um, history of uh, the current market, and the impact of uh, the virus on our market. We're gonna be talking about comparing real estate to other um, asset class and so on, and make our recommendation about uh, timing the market, whether it's a good time to buy, whether Silicon Valley real estate is in a bubble, and many other topics that we cover. 
Also, anyone who um, wants to look at some uh, prior presentation, please go to our website and you will find a link to our YouTube channel and a lot of uh, other uh, previous uh, market trend report. You can find information about different resources and so on. It's a site with uh, rich with information that you will find um, valuable. Without further ado, we're going to now start the presentation itself, and uh, we're going to start promoting the notion of uh, why everyone should be uh, making or thinking about investing. And as the child, as the title says, uh, life is a challenge on many levels. Uh, one of them is obviously the financial challenge. And if we can look at our life, basically. Um, in phases, and I chose to uh, to allocate those uh, the, our life expectancy into uh, three phases. One, obviously, the first one, which uh, is roughly until you are 22 age uh, age old, and if you are fortunate and lucky, it's a sort of a carefree life. I know it's not true for everyone, and uh, there are a lot of challenges in many different areas in the country as well as across the world. But um, uh, if you're lucky enough to have this carefree life where your parents take care of all your needs during that period, then that's what happened. Um, uh, the, second, <coughs> the second part of life, <coughs> which is uh, your working career, which uh, in a sense you are on your own and you have to start thinking about your family that you will be uh, starting. And as you see, this is a, a very challenging uh, a period of your life where during that period you have to accumulate uh, not only not only you have to um, uh, make payment for your rent for the food shelter kids education entertainment and all that stuff you also have to accumulate money for your retirement retirement which is another incredibly challenging um, undertaking and if you if you um, and if you are, <clears throat> if you are basically uh, in high tech, then um, basically uh, being still working at the age of 65 is not necessarily something which is guaranteed. So that's something which we have to be very much uh, aware of. Um, and to make things a little bit even clearer, and if we look at ourselves. Uh, over the years, and, uh, and what we see here that, uh, as we know, economy, the economy has a tendency of having cycles, okay? It goes up and down, up and down, as we know that. And in our, particularly um, in this area, and you, if you work in high tech, that you know that if, the, if uh, your, um, second, we typically know that if you are basically uh, here in, if your age is roughly between 45 plus and we, we hit a downside in the economy and you happen to work in high tech, you are reaching an area that I refer to as a death zone. It's an area which uh, I've experienced myself and I know a lot of my colleagues have experienced where companies have to lay off people and when they lay off people and you're hitting this uh, and you are roughly in this age, typically the older people will be the first one to go. Uh, I know companies not necessarily admitting to that, but that's the reality. And once the recovery starts, it takes a long time for you to join the workforce again and um, participate. So given that fact and also the fact that I believe that uh, you should be reducing your risk as with your age, which basically means that you should start thinking aggressively about investing roughly when you are in this uh, kind of age 30 to 40, right? That's kind of age and when you should start aggressively thinking about investing and thinking about the question of how you will be able to support your family and yourself and with not only through those working years, but also through your retirement years. So with that, uh, the, obviously the question is, uh, uh, the question is, uh, uh, 
how do you what is it what how much money you need okay and the rule of thumb as it would say is you should uh, basically have the 20 you you'll you'll need to uh, gross yearly income by 20 to determine approximately the asset base you're going to need so in other words if you think that you're going to need at least hundred thousand dollars to maintain your lifestyle during your retirement here it means that before you retire, you're going to need about two two million dollar. And obviously, if you lead a, a richer life or um, one that is more exp uh, consumes more of your um, assets, then you obviously need to have more savings uh, to get to, to maintain the lifestyle that you are uh, looking for. Nevertheless, though the assumption are that the asset base will retire about five percent annually. Obviously, obviously. Uh, you have uh, there's an issue of uh, volatility there. Uh, then we have the long term inflation, which is a consideration, and obviously we have the lower return. So these are the sort of risks that you should uh, be aware. That obviously I'm sure you are aware of that that uh, I are embedded in any plans that you are going to put together. Um, so. The, the next question is also okay. I know how I know I have to save money. I know I need how much roughly money I need. So the question is there: Where would I put the money? Okay, and you have to determine your allocation basically on obviously your age, how many risk factor, tax rate, and so on. And basically, I'm sure many of you have seen similar charts and how to divide their asset in different categories. Uh, obviously, we have. Uh, we have uh, cash, we have stock, uh, we stock portfolio, we have bonds, and in the other, you can put there uh, probably gold or Bitcoin as uh, my son likes to promote it and believes in that very much. And obviously I have real estate. Uh, we, myself and my family, um, most of our em emphasis are on real estate. Obviously we do have um, stock and cash, obviously we have some, um, Bitcoin was the influence of my son, uh, but most of our net value, I would say, is focused on real estate investment. And another point that I want to make, which is very, very important, that investing is a lifelong endeavor. Okay, lifelong endeavor. Anything less is nothing more than speculation. So, in other words, what we are, what I'm saying here, at least our philosophy is the philosophy of you need to um, start in, uh, thinking about investing early. You need to uh, diversify your investment, and it's and the entire thinking is a long-term thinking. It's something that you have to put your time and thought into it. Define the objective, and we're going to be talking about it more. And it's not something that it's speculative uh, uh, because any anything that is not a long-term is speculative obviously has risk with that and, and so on and so forth.